Association. Dr. Budell, I, you know, I want to congratulate you again on the uh, NIF's stunning achievements. It's fabulous. Um, DOE Office of Science selected Livermore to lead a multi-institutional endeavor called the Starfire Hub, uh, focusing on exploring and developing immense potential of inertial fusion energy technologies. Can you give us more details of the Starfire Hub to date and also what private fusion companies you've been working with and what unique capabilities they're bringing to the effort? Yes, thank you for the question, uh, Representative Lofgren. Uh, the Starfire Hub is a really exciting opportunity for us uh, to lean into our opportunity to build an inertial fusion energy ecosystem. So this allows us to work with the many players emerging in the private fusion industry uh, to begin to build programs to develop workforce that will support that industry and to begin work on some of the important technical challenges that stand between these companies and commercial deployment of fusion energy. So in the inertial fusion energy realm, uh, we're a smaller fraction of the fusion industry uh, in the US, but still um, growing day by day. We have CRADA's cooperative research and development agreements with most of the companies in this arena. So that includes companies like Eximer, Focused Energy, Pacific Fusion, um, and several new ones uh, coming on the scene as time goes by. And in each of those cases, these companies are critically dependent on our capabilities and our workforce. In particular for inertial confinement fusion, the only facility uh, where the physics of the igniting target can be studied is the National Ignition Facility at Livermore. So in each case, these companies are critically dependent on our research teams. We're also home to the most advanced modeling and simulation tools uh, to enable them to design their new schemes for approaching a commercial scheme for fusion energy. So this is, it's a small effort, um, you know, 15 to $17 million, uh, but very important as a community building effort in the beginning. I'll just note for the broader fusion ecosystem, this need for investment in public research infrastructure yeah. is also critically important. And all of the fusion companies, magnetic and inertial alike, are counting on the infrastructure at the national laboratories to really fill critical technical gaps for their schemes going forward. I, I, I just note, I mean, there's probably more private sector money going into fusion now than public, but there's some things only we can fund, the basic research uh, that's going to be beneficial to every single company that's exploring opportunities. I would note that China is currently uh, building a NIF replica that's bigger than what we have. And meanwhile, we have needs just to keep up with what we've got. I, I note that the um, last, in the December releases for fusion from uh, Office of Science, there was an award using AI to address questions as to material science for first wall fusion issues. What else needs to be done in terms of test beds, which China, I mean, the, the fusion scientists did an outline of what we should do. We haven't funded it, but China has fully funded it. What do we need to do to beat them to the punch on this and to be successful in our quest for fusion? So I think uh, ramping up the effort uh, at the facilities that we currently have in the national laboratories uh, to do things like understand the performance of first wall materials and other uh, critical componentry and high radiation environments. Uh, these companies need us to help them with tritium fuel cycle. So each of these reactor concepts that uses tritium requires a closed fuel cycle concept. Only the national labs really have the infrastructure to advance that. Uh, there are other types of materials and systems integration questions which are difficult to answer without the infrastructure at scale that we have. So the fusion labs, Princeton, Lawrence Livermore, Oak Ridge National Laboratory, Idaho, um, have a critical role to play really in providing that infrastructure. There are a set of new facilities that have been proposed by Fusion Energy Sciences in the Office of Science uh, that would play a critical role in advancing the cause. Uh, but I fear that the time scale to develop new facilities means that we need to invest more in existing facilities to really try to fill these gaps. <laughs> Director Buldow, I am wondering how your research 
is figuring into the clean energy solutions that are not only creating great jobs in California, but will help us lead the world out of the climate change impacts that are being felt, not just in California, not just in the United States, but all over the globe. And we know that other governments will are looking desperately for solutions. And I think it's pretty clear that whoever, whatever country comes up with the solutions that will help us escape climate change are go, is going to have the world's leading economy uh, because that technology is so highly sought after. So what are you doing and what do you see on the horizon for those clean energy solutions? So I divide my, thank you for the question, uh, divide my answer into two parts. Um, in the near term, um, our researchers have been working hard to uh, manage uh, carbon in our environment. So how to make uh, fossil fuel burning technologies uh, cleaner, how to capture and store carbon, um, how to utilize oil and gas infrastructure um, after it's been expended for some of these efforts. Uh, and we have been a big part, the national labs have been a big part of uh, building the national natural gas uh, economy in the United States. So I think that uh, adaptation of those technologies in a way that uh, makes them sustainable in the near term is critically important. For the future, we are right at the heart of building this future fusion economy, and the U.S. has an extraordinary opportunity to lead on this front. We have many of the leading facilities in the world and the only facility in the world that's ever achieved energy gain in a fusion experiment. So that moves fusion technology from the realm of fantasy technology into perhaps uh, a, a relatively nearer term solution for large scale baseload energy development uh, with a new technology. So we're working very hard to build up the ecosystem that goes along with that. That's addressing the R&D challenges that still remain to making fusion energy commercially viable, working with companies to understand the gaps they have, and then directing our research to rapidly fill those gaps. Again, materials, tritium fuel cycle being two notable ones and advancing the state of the art and key technologies for uh, things like inertial fusion energy, where advanced laser technology, high repetition rate experiments, and higher gain target designs, which we can work on at our national ignition facility will be central to success. Thank you, and I yield back.